All right, thanks, guys. The Blazers take on the Sixers. That's going to be a 1 o'clock Eastern tip-off in South Philly. The Sixers open the betting as the three-point favorite. Total open at 230. And since those markets open that one up, we're seeing a slight fade of Philadelphia when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement toward the under when it comes to the total as well. That line moved down to 229.5. Philly moved down to 2.5. So once again, the Sixers open minus three, down to minus two and a half, total open 230, down to 229 and a hook. 65% of the consensus is leaning toward the Sixers. 63% of the consensus is shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Portland is plus 120 for some money line cash. Now, Portland has uh, Turner listed as out for tonight's action. And on the Philly side, Joel Embiid will not be playing for the next couple of weeks as he is out as well. Uh, the Sixers are still 24-7 and seven straight up at home, 4-1 straight up in their last five. Jimmy Butler is scoring 22 points a game on average for the Sixers. They're also uh, manned by Boban Maranovic, who's bringing in 9.3 rebounds per game. He's just absolutely huge. Uh, Philly is ranking third in home offensive scoring at 119 points per game in that category there. They also rank second in home defensive rebounding as well. Now Portland on their side of things, they're just 6-12 and 12 straight up in their last 18 on the road. They rank 25th out of 30 in def uh, defending the three ball. And Portland is covering just 42% of their games when traveling, just 33% ATS as the official road dog. Now, when it comes to scoring, Portland is 11-4 to the under in their last 15 on the road. Philadelphia, 7-2 to the under in their last nine. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Philadelphia minus two in the under 229.5 in that matchup there. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm not going to take a break today. You guys know the deal. Patreon.com slash rock page. Get good picks. All right, next game. Brooklyn at Charlotte. 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off at the Queen City. Charlotte opened the betting as the two-point favorite. Total open 226 and a half. And since that one opened up, we're seeing steady money on Charlotte. We're also seeing movement toward the over as well. That total moved up to 227 and a half. Charlotte is now minus two and a half. So once again, the Hornets open two, up to minus two and a half. Total open 226 and a hook, up to 227 and a hook. 56% are leaning Brooklyn, 62% shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Brooklyn's plus 120 or some money line cash. Now Brooklyn's just two and six straight up in their last eight games, one four straight up in their last five on the road. The Nets rank 22nd in field goal percentage, shooting just 45% from the field. They also rank 21st in road defensive rebounding. Now Charlotte on their side of things, they're, uh, thir what, am, what did I write here? I don't know. I don't know what I wrote here, but they're six and one straight up in their last. I wrote a stat and I don't, I can't even read it. Something about being at home and the three ball. But anyway, six and one straight up in their last seven at home. They are led by Kemba Walker, who's dropping 24 points per contest. And uh, Cody Zeller with seven boards a game. Now, when it comes to the total, Charlotte is five and two to the under in their last seven taking on Brooklyn. If you're into historical trends, give me Charlotte minus two after buying the half a point in the under 227 and a half in that matchup there. Next game, Suns. Hawks. Where's that located? Next page. Suns, Hawks, 7 o'clock tip off in Atlanta. The Hawks open minus three, total open 233. And since that one opened up, we're seeing a fade of Atlanta when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement downward on the total. That moved down to 232 and a half. Spread moved down to two and a half. So once again, Atlanta open minus three, down to minus two and a half. Total open 233, down to 232 and a hook. 76% are leaning Atlanta, 68% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, the Suns are plus 120 on the money line. Now this Atlanta offense, believe it or not, they're averaging 111 points per contest on their home court. They're also four and two straight up in their last six taking on Phoenix. Atlanta's led by John Collins, who's dropping 21 points per contest. He's also averaging 10 rebounds a game as well. They're also led by Trey Young, who's scoring 20 points per contest on average as well. Now Phoenix on their side of things, they are covering just 38% of their games when traveling, and they're also covering just 39% of their games when taking on teams allowing more than 102 points per contest. 
Phoenix is on a dreadful 16-game losing streak right now, and they rank dead last in the NBA in offensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, Phoenix is 4-1 to the under in their last five, 4-2 to the under in their last six on the road. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it down, and take Atlanta minus two in the under 232.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Grizzlies, Cavaliers, 7 o'clock tip-off in Cleveland. The Cavs open minus 1.5, total open 202.5. And, and since that one opened up, we're seeing movement upward on the total. We're also seeing Cleveland take a little money in the early going here as well. They're minus 2, total 204. So once again, Cleveland open 1.5, up to minus 2, total open 202.5, up to 204. 60% are leaning Cleveland, 84% shaded toward the over. And at the moment, the Grizzlies are plus 110 on the money line. Now we have Anderson and Jackson still out indefinitely for Memphis. And Valachunas is questionable for tonight's action as well. Uh, but regardless, I'm going to cap this thing as if Valachunas will be in the game. And with that in mind, Memphis is still 7-3 against the spread in their last 10. They rank second in the NBA in points allowed at just 103 a game. Memphis is led by Mike Conley, who's dropping 21 points per contest. They're also led by Ivan Robb, who's uh, bringing down nine rebounds a game. And Valachunas, who's bringing down seven boards a game as well. Now, Cleveland is just 13-46 and 46 straight up overall for the year. 8-22 and 22 straight up on their home court. Cleveland ranks 29th in scoring, 28, uh, 28th in field goal percentage, and 30th in home defensive field goal percentage. So very bad for the Cavaliers in many different categories. Now scoring-wise, Cleveland's 13-6 and six to the over in their last 19 at home. Memphis 4-2 and two to the over in their last six. Give me Memphis plus two in the over 204 in that matchup there. Next game, Lakers-Pelicans, 7 o'clock tip-off in New Orleans. Uh, let's see here. The Lakers open minus three and a half, total open 230. And since that one opened up, not a whole lot of movement here. We saw a half a point move on the spread. So once again, Lakers open three and a half, up to minus four, totals at 230. New Orleans is plus 155 on the money line. Now, Anthony Davis is questionable tonight with that shoulder. Uh, we also have Darius Miller questionable with the ankle injury, uh, injury. Both of those players obviously playing for, uh, bless you, obviously playing for New Orleans. Now, the Pelicans do rank sixth in home scoring at 117 points per contest in that category. They also rank fourth in offensive rebounding. New Orleans is led by Julius Randle, who's dropping 19 points per contest. He's also averaging seven rebounds a game as well. Uh, New Orleans is covering 63% of their games as the official home dog. They're 5-2 and two against the number in their last seven, taking on the Lakers. And speaking of the Lakers, they're just 2-4 and four straight up in their last six, 1-4 and four straight up in their last five on the road. This Lakers defense is allowing 116 points per contest when traveling. They're also ranking 25th in road defensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, the Lakers are 75% to the over in their last eight on the road. Pelicans 4-2 and two to the over in their last six. Give me the Pelicans plus four as the official home dog in the over 230 in that matchup there. Next game, Pacers-Wizards, and I think we're going back. Yes, we are. Pacers-Wizards, 7 o'clock tip-off in the nation's capital. This one opened up as a pick'em contest with a total at 221.5. And, and since that one opened up, not a whole lot of movement on the total. We're still at that original opening number. Uh, but we did see the Pacers take a little bit of money on the road here. They're now minus one. So once again, the Pacers open as a pick, up to minus one, totals 221.5, 73% are leaning Indiana, 51% shaded toward the under, and at the moment, the Wizards are minus 105 for some money line cash. Now we have Matthews and Turner, both questionable for the Pacers. Uh, you got to keep that in mind because they, they're still not all that great covering the number on the road. And as a matter of fact, they're covering just 44% of their games when traveling. They're also covering just 33% of their games that tipped off at the current point spread. They rank 26th in road offensive rebounding. Now, Washington ranks 5th in home scoring at 117 points per contest. They also rank 5th in home field goal percentage at 48 
38.2% shooting from the field on their home court. Washington is 7-3 against the spread as the official home underdog. 8-2 ATS in their second of a back-to-back. Uh, they're led by Bradley Beal, who's dropping 25 points per contest. They're also led by Bobby Portis, who's bringing down seven boards per contest as well. Now, total-wise, Washington is 5-0 and to the over in their last five, 4-1 and to the over in their last five at home. Give me Washington plus one in the over 221.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Pistons, Heat. Detroit Pistons at the Miami Heat. And that is going to be a 7.30 tip-off in Miami. The Heat opened minus four, total open 205 and a half. And since that one opened up, we're seeing a slight fade of Miami when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement upward on the total as well. That total moved up to 207, spread moved down to three and a half. So once again, Miami opened minus four, down to minus three and a half, total open 205 and a hook, up to 207. 63% are leaning Miami, 79% shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Detroit's plus 145. For some money line cash. Now we have Goran Dragic questionable with a knee injury for Miami. Uh, Johnson is also listed out for the Heat. Miami's just 5-13 and 13 against the spread as the official home favorite. They're covering just 30% of their games at the current number as well. Miami ranks 28th in home scoring at just 104 points per contest in that category. They also rank 29th in home field goal percentage, shooting just 43% in that category there as well. Now, Detroit, completely different story on the other side of things. They rank 8th in road defensive points allowed at 109 points per contest. Detroit's also 4-2 and two against the spread in their last six. 5-1 and one straight up in that same category. And they're being led by Blake Griffin, who's dropping 23 points per contest on average for the Pistons. Now, total-wise, Detroit's 5-1 and one to the over in their last six. Miami, 7-3 to the over in their last ten, taking on Detroit. Give me the Pistons, plus four after buying the half a point, getting the job done as the official home underdog in the over 207 in that matchup there. Next game, Celtics-Bulls, 8 o'clock tip-off in Chicago. The Celtics open 9.5, up to 10.5, total open 221, down to 220 and a hook. 57% are leaning Boston, 66% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, Chicago is plus 460 on the money line. Now, Boston has uh, Gordon Hayward listed as questionable with an ankle injury. Uh, Bain still out indefinitely as well for the Celtics. Uh, Boston's failed to cover in six out of their last nine on the road. They're also just 2-9 and nine ATS at the current number. Boston ranks 22nd in road defensive rebounding. And they're just 7-13 against the spread as the official road favorite. Now, Chicago's 2-0 straight up and against the spread in their last couple of games. They're 3-2 ATS in their last five. They're led by Zach Levine, who's dropping 23 points per contest. And Laurie Markinen, who's bringing down 10 rebounds a game. Now, total-wise, Chicago's 18-11 to the under on their home court. Boston 5-0 to the under in their last five on the road. Give me Chicago plus 11 after buying the half a point. And the under, 220 and a half in that matchup there. Next game, Kings, Thunder, 8 o'clock tip-off at OKC. Thunder open minus 7, down to minus 5 and a half. Total open 238 and a hook, up to 239 and a hook. 62% are leaning Sacramento, 66% shaded toward the under. And at the moment, Sacramento is plus 205 for some money line cash. OKC's 12 and 2 straight up in their last 14, 10 and 4 ATS in that same category. They're led by Paul George who's dropping 28 points per contest. Russell Westbrook is scoring uh, 23 a game as well. OKC ranks 3rd in scoring at 116 points per contest. They also rank 2nd in offensive rebounding in the NBA. Sacramento is just 4 and 8 against the spread in their last dozen when traveling. They rank 27th in points allowed on the road and 28th in road defensive rebounding. And when it comes to the total, Sacramento is 6-3 and three to the under. Excuse me. Sacramento is 6-3 and three to the under in their last nine on the road, 14-5 and five to the under in their last 19 when traveling. Meanwhile, OKC is 4-2 and two to the under in their last six at home, taking on Sacramento. Give me OKC minus five after buying the hook in the under, 239.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Timberwolves, Bucks. 8.30 tip-off in Milwaukee. 
The box opened 11 and a half, up to minus 12 and a half. Totals 228, up to 229. Minnesota's plus 800 on the money line. We have Georgie Dang listed as questionable. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns also questionable as well. Uh, both players for Minnesota. Meanwhile, on the Milwaukee side, uh, Brogdon's questionable with a foot, and DiVincenzo has been listed as out with a foot injury as well. Milwaukee's failed to cover in four out of their last five at home. They rank 13th in defensive rebounding. Minnesota on the other side is 4-1 ATS in their last five. Five and two against the spread in their last seven on the road. They're led by Carl Anthony Towns, who's dropping 19 points per contest and 10 boards a game. So obviously an impact player there. Uh, very, very important to the Lions if he plays or not tonight. They're also led by Wiggins, who's dropping 18 points per game as well. When it comes to the total, Minnesota's just 42 to uh, 42% to the over in their second of a back-to-back. -back. Milwaukee's just 5 and 10 to the over in their games that tipped off at the current posted total. I'm going to purchase the half a point, buy it up, and take Minnesota plus 13 in the under 229 in that matchup there. Next game, Rockets, Warriors, 830 tip-off at Golden State. The Warriors open minus 8, up to minus 9.5. Total open 234.5, down to 233, 52% are leaning toward the Warriors in this matchup here. Now for Houston, James Harden is listed as questionable for tonight's action. We have no idea if he's going to play or not. Uh, Iman Shumpert is ruled out for the Rockets as well. Um, I'm going to cap this game as if Harden is playing. I'm pretty optimistic, although uh, things could have changed uh, since 6 o'clock this morning. But anyway, I'm going to cap this game as if Harden will be in the game. And with that in mind, Houston is 13-9 ATS taking on teams over 550, 2-0 against the spread in their couple of games that tipped off at the current number. Houston ranks 10th in offense, I'm um, sorry, 10th in road points allowed. And they also rank first in defending the three ball when traveling. Uh, Houston's led by James Harden, obviously, who's dropping 32 points per contest. They're also led by Chris Paul, who's uh, dropping 16 points per game. And obviously, Clint, uh, Clint Capella, who's uh, bringing down 10.3 rebounds per contest on average, there as well. <clears throat> Golden State, on their side of things, completely different story. They're 0-2 against the spread in their couple of games versus Houston this year. Uh, they're covering just 39% of their games as the official home favorite. Golden State ranks 20th in home points allowed at 112, and they are just 5-13 and against the number in their 18 games that tipped off at the current point spread. Now, total-wise, Golden State is 6-1 to the under in their last seven taking on Houston. Houston 67% to the under in their games at the current posted total. I'm going to purchase the half a point, slide it up, and take Houston plus 10 in the under 233 in that matchup there. All right, next and final game for the show for the NBA, it is going to be Mavericks at the Jazz. Uh, 10 o'clock tip-off in Utah. The Jazz open 10.5 up to minus 11. Total open 215.5 down to 214 and a hook. 57% are leaning Dallas, 51%. Shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Dallas is plus 520 for some money line cash. Now, Dallas has Luka Doncic uh, listed as questionable with an ankle injury. Uh, that said, I'm going to cap this game as if he's playing. And uh, if that man does play, well, regardless of whether he plays or not, Dallas is... Are you heading out? No. I'm just hanging? Just cool. I'm not wearing the uh, headphones anymore because some guy was ripping me. He said... Uh, it's 2019, get some uh, AirPods. It might be a good good idea for my birthday. Okay. said, so, yeah, get some AirPods. And then another guy was like, oh, there's too much uh, noise with your, your, I guess, the your microphone. Shirt. And maybe it was rubbing against the yeah. shirt. So I was like, is that an ASMR video where, like, people eat in front of the camera and, like, smack that. their lips? <laughs> nah, I can't. If I do that, I'm going to end up farting. ASMR, I'll fart right into the microphone. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Got a little distracted there, guys. Uh, my fiance is naked. All right. Uh, anyway, Dallas at Utah. Uh, we went through all that. Luka Don uh, Donkic listed questionable with an ankle industry, uh, injury. That aside, Dallas is 4-1 against the spread on the road. They rank fifth in defensive... Um, they rank fifth in defending the three ball. Uh, Dallas is 63% against the spread when catching the points. Donkic is averaging 20 points per contest. Tim Hardaway is actually averaging 16 points per contest as well. Meanwhile, on the Utah side, they're covering just 33% of their games in the second of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, they rank 26 in home free throw percentage, uh, shooting just 72% from the stripe. When it comes to the total... Uh, 
Utah 67% to the over in their second of a back-to-back. -back. Dallas 7 to 5 to the over in that same category. Uh, give me Dallas plus 11 as the road dog in the over 214 and a half in that matchup there. All right, we're going to slide into just two college basketball games, just a couple games. We have a huge slate today, but uh, I just want to take a look at two games, and uh, one of them a prolific game, the other one uh, not so great. Uh, let me see if I can cue that up. The first one I'm covering is a 2 o'clock game. Let's see. We have... Getting closer. There it is. Ohio State at Maryland. 2 o'clock tip-off at Maryland. The Terrapins open 6.5 down the minus 6. Total open 129.5 down the 128 and a hook. 66% are leaning Maryland. 57% shaded toward the over. And at the moment, Ohio State's plus 215 for some money line cash. Now Maryland's 4 and 2 against the spread in their last 6, 14 and 3 straight up on their home court. They're led by Anthony Covan, who's dropping 14 points per contest. They're also led by, by uh, Bruno Fernando, who's scoring 13 points per game himself and bringing down 9 rebounds for the Terrapins. Now Ohio State on their side of things, they're just 3 and 7 against the spread taking on teams over 650. They rank 194th in the country in scoring at just 70 points per contest. Now, total-wise, Ohio State is, believe it or not, 67% to the over, taking on teams averaging more than 72 points per contest. I'm going to lean Maryland minus 6 in the over 128.5 in that matchup there. All right, next and final game for the show. It is a 345 tip-off. A very weird 345 tip-off, but that is Florida State at UNC. 345 tip-off at Chapel Hill. UNC opened seven and a half down to seven. Total open 157 and a hook, up to 158 even. The Tar Heels are taking 51% of the consensus. Uh, that's where they're leaning. And 72% of the consensus is shaded toward the over in this matchup here. FSU's plus 250 on the money line. Now, UNC has Sterling Manley listed as questionable with a knee injury. Uh, 